In this video, we're going to do a hands-on example of validating JSON with a JSON schema in C Sharp. Now, why do we want to validate? Most modern businesses are integrating data from various sources inside and outside of the company. And the validation gives us some kind of certainty that the data that we're consuming is going to be the right shape that we want to consume. And we're not going to end up with any unexpected or out of range data. So the steps we're going to do, and we'll jump right in after this slide, we're going to generate a schema from existing JSON. We'll add some validation rules to the schema and maybe also review the schema and make any tweaks that we need to make. We'll import the schema into Visual Studio 2019. We're going to add the newtonsoft.json.schema library. We'll parse the schema, parse the JSON, validate it, and look for errors. So without further ado, let's get started. The JSON feed that we're going to consume in this case is plant locations at the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden. There are about 300 plants that I've GPS. They're all very close to each other. So the reason why I picked this JSON feed is it has a nice variety of data types, numbers, integers, and strings. Now I have another video that I made called Generate a JSON Client in .NET. This video builds off of that video with one footnote, and that is in the Generate JSON Client in .NET, I used a slightly different JSON feed. I picked a new feed here to generate new data types, but nonetheless, I've started a project with this new feed that leaves off exactly where this generate JSON client video left off as well. So very straightforward. And of course, I'll have it in GitHub with several commits so you can follow along if you want. Uh, we're using web client to connect to the internet, download a string of data, parse the string of data, and then make that string of data available to a web page. And here's what that web page looks like. So you see web page running locally on my machine, but it has grabbed this JSON data of plants from the Cincinnati Zoo. So we'll use this as our starting point, and we will go ahead and add a JSON schema validation to this look and feel. So here's the JSON feed. It's a relatively long feed. We don't need to put all of this into our schema generation tool. And there are several different options for the schema generation tool. One that I like is this one called QuickType. So we just need to take a look at, we certainly could put the whole thing in, but we just need to take a look at how it starts and how it ends. We see it starts with a curly indicating a JSON object, and then there's a square bracket indicating an array or a collection of data. And then within that, there are a whole bunch of these open and close curly units. So Let's start by selecting a few objects at the top and control C to copy. Let's take a look at the very bottom and just confirm that we see close curly to indicate we're closing an object and then close square bracket to indicate we're closing an array. And then finally close curly again to indicate we are closing the specimen object at the very top that owns that array. If that's confusing, don't worry, just copy and paste the whole thing in if you want. I'm just trying to make it look a little more user friendly. So I navigate to app.quicktype.io one of several tools that will generate a schema for you. There are several out there if you want to search the internet. Uh, this one I like because, frankly, it's very straightforward, uh, easy to use as well. So right click and paste. And a couple things we know we need to do. We need to make sure it's in balance. We have open curly, open square bracket, then open curly. Then I go to the end. We have close curly. There's a comma there. The last item should not have a comma following it. So we'll delete the comma, close square bracket, and then open curly. On the right side for language, I will choose JSON schema, and we'll take a quick look at this. We see latitude, longitude, or number, plant ID, specimen ID, or integer, and then all of the rest are string. Let's, I'll tell you what we'll do. We will, we will grab all of the JSON, and we'll put it into jsonviewer.stack.hu, which is another one of my favorite JSON tools. This is easy to visualize, so right click here, and we'll paste. Now go to viewer, and we'll do just a quick gut check. We see our, our starting unit here. Then we see our array of specimens. We see latitude 39, longitude 84. Those both look like number types. Plant ID and specimen ID look like whole number types, and the rest look like strings. So you see the number types here are indicated with green. So just a quick gut check of our model, and things look pretty good. Uh, lots more going on in the schema, which uh, we can describe in a separate video, but nonetheless, at this point, we have a JSON schema. So let's copy it all. And now let's go back to our Visual Studio project. I'm going, going to right click and I'm going to choose add, and then we'll say new item. And then the new item, I'm going to just call this, let's call it specimen schema.json. We'll start it as a text file, but specimen schema.json is fine. And then we can simply paste uh, what we got from our schema and choose save. So now our schema is embedded. 
One other thing I want to do while I'm here, and I'll tell you I've already done this, but I'll show you how to do it anyway. We want to make sure that we have the newtonsoft.json.schema installed. So go to Browse, look for newtonsoft.json.schema, and make sure to install that. Then you can click on the Installed tab. You can see it there as well. As I mentioned, I did that before the video. Just save a little bit of time. Also note, this is different from newtonsoft.json. That's a different library. JSON.schema is the one that actually does validation. So if you already got newtonsoft.json, you also need to grab the schema. Okay, with that, let's go to our uh, code behind page where we're reading in the data here, and let's go ahead and validate against the schema. I so we know on line 26, we're getting a string of JSON data. So the first thing that we need to do is we want to read in the schema itself. So let's say system dot io dot file dot read all text just like so and then let's pass in the name of that schema file specimen schema dot json i put it out at that root directory so we should be okay to read it from there now within here we're also going to need to use that newtonsoft library to do a j schema dot parse and then wrap that entire unit in parentheses terminate with the semicolon this will return to us the j schema object so j schema schema equals j schema dot parse. Okay, we did add the Newtonsoft library, but we also have to uh, import or use the namespace. So a quick little click here, and there we go, just like so. And that reads in that uh, schema for us. Next thing we need to do is we need to parse the JSON with the schema. Now this part is just a little bit tricky. Look at your JSON feed. If the first thing you see is a curly use j object. If the first thing you see in your JSON feed is a square bracket, use J array, because what you're doing is you're essentially loading this into the object or the array. So mine is a curly. I'm going to say J object dot parse, and I'm going to pass in the JSON string uh, that was right up above. And this will return to me a J object, JSON object. We'll just call it JSON object, just like so. Okay. Now, uh, once again, uh, J object is from Newtonsoft, so we're going to need to add our using statement here, just like so, and that will resolve just fine. Next part, we can we can do a JSON object, then we can invoke is valid on this, and that will that will give us the validation against the schema. Uh, but what's uh, for, we need to pass the schema in? Sorry, so let's say schema, just like so. So what that is going to do is it's going to validate this JSON that we're reading in here against this schema that we're reading in here. That's going to return essentially a yes or no, so we could wrap that in an if test. And we can only run this, uh, put the stuff in the web page part, if the schema does validate. But what if the schema does not validate? We kind of want to have an idea of what's going on there. So let me put in an else part, and I'm going to add one more thing, which is a list of strings that will represent any schema validation violations that we get. So we'll say list and then string. Uh, actually, let's make it an I list string. And then we'll say validation events equals new list. And then once again, string, uh, open and close paren and terminate with a semicolon. Uh, now, what we can do is we can pass this validation events as a, a parameter as an out parameter actually in our is valid method call. So we'll say out validation events. And what that means is if something goes wrong, it's going to drop a message into this collection of validation events. Remember, if nothing goes wrong, we do the if part here. But if something goes wrong, we do the else part down here. So this is where we want to pay attention to those validation events. Now, realistically, we would probably log things somewhere, but for us, we just want a quick visual inspection. So let's do a for each, and we'll say string evt in validation events, just like so. So iterate over all the validation events, and then say console.writeline. And once again, we'd really want to do some actual logging here, uh, but this will just pause for a moment so we can look at any validation errors. So console.writeline, and then we pass that string that represents the validation error to console.writeline. Finally, let's say view data uh, specimens equals new list specimen, just like so. So we'll pass essentially an empty list back to our web page because the validation failed. Now, once again, what you'd probably want to do here is show an error message to the user, but just so we can inspect, we'll do it like so. 
Now let's go ahead and take a look in IIS Express. As the application loads, we see our breakpoint hits, and we'll step through this one line at a time using F10. So F10 was going to read the data. F10 is going to read our specimen. Now we're going to parse the data we got from online. Now we're going to create that empty validation lists. And now we're going to do the magic check where we are validating the JSON data feed against the schema that we've given it. I press F10, we're either going to end up on the if part or the else part here. Looks like validation passed, we ended up on the if part. So I choose F5. And sure enough, our page has rendered with data. Uh, so validation passed, everything looks good. But we didn't really validate a whole lot of stuff, did we? Because we just stuck with that original data model. So let's go into here and let's see where we can tweak a few items and have a bit more strict validation. So first of all, uh, latitude is a number. Uh, so what we can do is we can give this a minimum. And since we're adding another attribute, we need to put a comma over that first attribute, which is type. So we'll say minimum. Well, latitude, yeah, I will admit I don't know what the absolute minimum latitude is on this world. It's probably somewhere in the high 80s. But just to be safe, I'm going to say minus 100, indicating uh, essentially the southern hemisphere. And then we can also say maximum. And we'll say 100, indicating essentially the north pole, somewhere around there. Notice everything except the last entry ends with a comma. Longitude, let's do a minimum and maximum here as well. If you're wondering where I'm getting these, by the way, this is part of the, just the JSON schema, these things minimum and maximum. JSON-schema.org uh, has a list of all of, the, all of the validation rules that we can set. See here you can see some rules, for example, for integer. Uh, multiple of is an interesting one if it has to be maybe a multiple of 5 or multiple of 10. Uh, several different things. Minimum, greater than or equal to. Exclusive minimum is greater than only. So quite a bit to go through there. I'll let you take a look at that and decide what's best for you. So we'll say minimum, and then we'll say maximum. And for that, we'll say 150 positive and no comma after that. Uh, plant ID, we'll say minimum. And we'll give that zero because we, we wouldn't have a, that's a unique identifier, so we wouldn't have something less than zero. A specimen ID, very similar. We'll say minimum and then zero, like so. So uh, genus, we could give that maybe a minimum length. So maybe we say min length two and add a couple commas here. And then we might also give it a max length. So length would be a count of the number of characters. Max length of, I'm going to say 65. I doubt there's a genus that's that large. So nonetheless, we've put a few rules in place. Let's see what happens when we run now. Okay, walk through the debugger, F10. F10, F10, F10. I get a little nervous on this part, F10. Looks like we're good. Our, our data has passed, our, our JSON data has passed the validation. I'm going to go ahead and press F5. And once again, uh, the page appears like so. So we've seen now that we have good and valid data, but let's force an error. Let's make something that's ridiculous where we force an error to happen. So go back to our schema, and let's say that latitude has to be a minimum of 50. The Cincinnati Zoo is right around 39 or 40 degrees latitude, so all of those latitudes are going to be less than 50, and I anticipate that this will cause the validation to fail. Okay, we'll debug one more time, so F10, 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 F10. Now this is where I anticipate that we'll see a failure. We're going to do the validation, and if the failure does indeed happen, it should skip down to the else part and tell us what the failure is. So F10, sure enough we go to the else part. Now we're going to iterate over all of these events. And as I mentioned, this is just kind of slow us down a little bit, and we can take a look at each of the events individually. And we mouse over it, and we see that float 39.144 and change is less than the minimum value of 50. And then it says path specimens.lat. Notice the zero indicates the very first element of the specimens, and the lat indicates the part of the JSON that we're parsing. So you can see over here on the raw data feed, uh, the very first entry is 39.144 and change. And that's what the validation is failing on because 39 is less than 50. Now I can continue to F10 over this and it's going to show me each one of the errors and they're all going to be very similar. So float 39.143 is less than the minimum value of 50. It's going to run every single one of these against those validation errors. So I will go ahead and choose F5 
and we'll see that nothing appears on our page because all the validations fail. So we know that this validation is very important because we're going to be consuming data from different sources. And number one, we want that to be predictable. But number two, if it goes wrong, we want it to be very clear to the data provider why it is wrong. So in this video, we generated a schema. We added validation rules to the schema. We imported the schema to Visual Studio. We added our Newton soft package. We parsed the schema. We parsed the JSON. We validated under a few scenarios where it did validate and where validation failed. And where validation failed, we looked for errors. So I hope this video has been helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. You can see the GitHub link in the description of this video. Thank you.